here today. I'm super excited about uh, the guests that we have here. They are from on Juno. Um, so we are going to, um, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown of the agenda and then I'll pass it over to the on Juno team. So first we're going to start out with um, introductions from the on Juno team. Um, they're going to talk a little bit about the history of on Juno, uh, and how they've worked with crypto teams in the past. Then they're going to do a quick presentation of their product and then we'll take Q and A at the end. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to raise your hand at the end of this call. Um, and I think I'll kick it over to you, Varun. Thanks, thanks a lot, Cha. Uh, super excited to be here. This is actually our first community uh, AMA. We've had multiple partnerships in, in the past, but this is the first time we're actually talking to the community and, and getting feedback uh, through the proposal. Uh, so first of all, uh, thanks uh, the entire team of, uh, of, of Shapeshift, uh, Chao, Diggy, uh, and everyone else. Uh, this is an amazing opportunity for us. Uh, just to give you a, a background, so we have like you know four folks from our team. Myself, I'm one of the co-founders. Siddharth is my my co-founder. His uh, username is Siddharth Varma. Uh, we have Gary here, who is the head of partnerships for for Anjuno. Uh, he's based in the US. We have the Bockler, uh, who is the the head of product for us. Uh, so happy to take any questions at the at the end of the call as well. Uh, just to give you some background about about the team and and you know all the time that we have spent in crypto. Uh, as founders and as, as a team, we have been kind of working together for almost like five, five and a half years now. We've been in the crypto space for close to around four years. Uh, so a lot of experience in uh, in, in terms of uh, a lot of experience in uh, just in terms of uh, spending a lot of time with banks, fintechs, and, and especially uh, in the last four years, we've spent a lot of time in, in DeFi as well. Uh, in 2018, 2019, uh, we were part of the consensus accelerator, built one of the first uh, earliest DeFi protocols called Nuo, which is a lending and borrowing margin trading platform. Uh, had scaled it to like almost 25 million, uh, you know, 30 million total value locked at that particular point. So super early, one of the, the biggest ones at that particular time. Uh, what we realized while, while building that protocol was, uh, I think, margin trading as a product was very difficult for us to, to kind of serve US customers and, and other jurisdictions. So we wanted to kind of take a more compliant approach. And this is exactly what, what we did over the last 18 months or so. So we shut down the Nuo platform completely and instead went and partnered with a bank in the US and had, you know, in, in the last 18 months, uh, went ahead and targeted, uh, you know, users specifically in the US. Now we integrate with all the different financial rails and traditional financial financial rails in the in the US and now have created a beautiful product. Uh, the goal for us and, and the reason we wanted to kind of reach out to, to Shapeshift uh, and, and uh, get community on board was to enable on-ramps and off-ramps uh, for uh, for Shapeshift and uh, essentially all the Shapeshift contributors as well. Uh, so we, uh, the way we work, we actually work at the intersection of, of banking and crypto. Uh, so we uh, we partner with a bank in the in the US, uh, have like a beautiful experience for anyone in the US to create a create a checking account. We also embed crypto wallets within that checking account itself. So going from cash to crypto and, and you know back from, from crypto to cash is like super seamless as for us. And we've done the hard part in terms of KYC, AML to create like this beautiful robust product. Uh, the goal for us uh, for this integration is essentially to have uh, you know on Juno listed as one of the, the buy and sell partners for uh, for for Shapeshift and what that will enable uh, Shapeshift contributors as well as uh, sort of DAO contributors uh, to do is get on ramped into into Shapeshift wallet or any other wallet of, of your choice quite easily and because we rely on ACH rails the limits are going to be much higher the fees are going to be much lower and it's just going to be a, a much more beautiful and seamless experience for you to actually use Shapeshift uh, let me just also share my my screen uh, Shao can I do that on on Zoom directly so that everyone can see the presentation. Uh, I've just shared my, my screen on, uh, on on Zoom. Uh, let me know if, uh, if if that works, and others can see it on on YouTube links and and, uh, and other places. Uh, so this uh, this is essentially what what we're trying to do. We are essentially empowering users to kind of uh, enable recurring deposits as well as getting paid in, in crypto. And as I mentioned, we kind of work at the crossroads and at the intersection of of fiat and crypto. Uh, quick background, we have built like multiple companies and, and, and products in the past, Nuo being the biggest among them, which is uh, the which is the earliest DeFi protocol. 
uh, we are definitely backed by some amazing set of investors, uh, given the fact that we have spent so much time, have some amazing names on board, Polychain, uh, Sequoia, uh, Sequoia Capital, Dragonfly, Hash, Greycroft, so a bunch of investors, both from fintech as well as from crypto backgrounds, uh, uh, have, have kind of backed us. Uh, we also have an amazing set of angel investors. So Balaji from, from Coinbase, Robert Leshner from, from Compound, Shruti from, from Coinbase as well. Uh, so just a, an amazing set of advisors and, and investors to, uh, uh, to have on board. Uh, there are a few things which are super critical in terms of what we are able to provide currently. Uh, so just the fact that we, we talk to the banking rails and financial rails in the US, we are able to create a checking account uh, for the customer instantly. It's a super crypto friendly checking account because we have not only the FTIC insured checking account, but also the crypto wallets directly integrated uh, within the platform as well. We also issue a, a debit card, both virtual as well as a plastic or a metal card instantly for the customer so that you can start spending from that from the debit card, get crypto cash backs and other things around that. Uh, the product is cr cross-platform from day one. So, you know, you can use it on web, iOS, Android, pretty much, you know, everywhere, right? Uh, so th that was something which is super important for us and the team has been working towards it for quite quite some time. We also have direct integrations, not only with banks in the US. So for example, once you create a checking account with us, funding that account can happen very seamlessly and we are, we'll be able to pull money from a Bank of America account, Chase account or any uh, any bank in, in the US. But we also directly integrate with payroll providers, be it a Gusto or an ADP or any other payroll provider of, of your choice we uh, we have like 90 percent coverage when it comes to payroll and whenever your paycheck arrives you automatically are able to deduct that uh, when the when the money gets into our checking account convert that into btc eth usdc and send it to your shapeshift wallet directly so that is a huge opportunity for anyone who wants to kind of uh, get paid in crypto and receive their paycheck in a metamask or a shapeshift or a ledger wallet to kind of do that very seamlessly uh, these are some of the partners we, we work with and we work with uh, a lot of regulated partners in, in, in the US. Uh, we also work with a lot of crypto custody providers and, and others in, in the US as well. So, you know, Synapse and Evolve are, are our banking partners. We enable uh, remittances via TransferWise, uh, Argyle for, for payroll switch and, and things around that. Uh, so it's just a beautiful amalgamation of, of, you know, using all these different partners in the background. And at the end of it, we are able to provide a very seamless experience between cash and crypto. Uh, so two important features which uh, we'll be able to provide essentially for, for, for Shapeshift, uh, especially at the time of, uh, of on-ramps. Uh, when you, for example, you, you go to, uh, go to Shape, Shapeshift and uh, you want to say, I want to actually get on-ramped uh, into my Shapeshift wallet or my MetaMask wallet, we will be able to pull money from your paycheck directly and send it to the uh, so a MetaMask or a Shapeshift wallet. Or uh, we can also, you know, directly talk to your primary bank account, be it a Bank of America, Chase, uh, deduct that money from that account, convert that into crypto and send it to uh, to any of these wallets as well. So those are the two things that, that we essentially enable. One is uh, direct integration with your with your paycheck, which is a crypto paycheck essentially. And the other is recurring buy so that automatically every week, every month, uh, that amount kind of gets deducted and gets sent to your Shapeshift or any other wallet of your choice. Uh, so uh, uh, let me also just quickly show you how it's it's likely going to look like once you once all of this is integrated. So right now there are a few on-ramp partners, be it Gem, Bank, Banksa, and a few others. Uh, we expect Anjuno to be one of the recurring uh, partners uh, for for Shapeshift as well. Uh, so this is uh, we'll initially uh, start with a with a buy use case. Uh, once the user clicks on uh, on, on on buy, we will ask them exactly what is the amount that the user wants to buy and where the money Uh, we, we will know exactly, uh, given the fact that the user has created a checking account, we'll be able to deduct money from the checking account, convert that into crypto and send it to uh, uh, the user's wallet essentially. Uh, there is a quick KYC which happens in, in, in the background, uh, log into the payroll uh, automatically happens for the user as well. So either it's a uh, quick on-ramp from your, your checking account, which is your primary account or from your payroll provider. So both the options are going to be available. Uh, Apart from, from this, uh, one of the key things which is going to be super critical, uh, which is basically recurring buys and, and on-ramps for, for Shapeshift cash customers, we are also, uh, you know, given the fact that we are going to convert this cash into crypto, there are going to be certain amount of fees which will which will get charged. So we charge around somewhere between 0.95% for this cash to crypto conversion. Uh, if you compare that to a Coinbase or, or a Cash App and a few others, we are almost like 100% or 200% lesser uh, compared to any of these, these competitors or uh, other uh, service providers out there. And the best part is that we are actually 
uh, sharing part of this revenue, the uh, 30% of this 0.95% is going to be shared back to the DAO. So any fees that the users of, of, of Shapeshift essentially pay us, 30% uh, of that goes to, to, the, to the DAO as, as part of the sort of revenue share that we'll be doing. Uh, so that in general uh, is sort of the, the flow that, that we're looking at. Uh, let me just kind of quickly bring in, in Siddharth who can just you know talk about the proposal and how we want to go about integrating all of this in, into, into Shapeshift. Hey, uh, hi guys, can you hear? Uh, one quick check, can you, can everyone hear me? Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, so, you know, as Varun mentioned, uh, the purpose for, you know, the, the, the whole proposal that we're pitching is um, essentially to help Shapeshift members as well as the contribute the DAO contributors in uh, to, to instantly get on-ramped as well as off-ramped uh, from crypto to go from cash to crypto as well as vice versa from crypto to cash instantly uh and while doing that also benefit the dow in terms of the revenue share that we have um so i'll quickly just go through the benefits and motivation and you know basically what what exactly we are proposing to be changed in the shapeshift side as well as on the on juno side all right so uh as a shapeshift uh member uh you know in order for you to get instant access to a uh, crypto uh, going from cash to crypto is actually right now a pretty cumbersome journey because one has to either go through the credit card or, or the debit card rails or one has to uh, you know go through the one time ACH transfers it takes around two to three days and then it uh, finally you know you have a lot of fees coming on the way and then you finally go from your cash to crypto but what uh, this what the, the the integration that Varun was just talking about which uh, will add a plugin or uh, another uh, kind of a uh, option in the shapeshift wallet to buy crypto what that is going to provide is an instant way for users of shapeshift wallet to get on ramped into crypto using the ach uh, rails which was you know otherwise it was not possible because uh, we have the uh, existing banking infrastructure that we've already been working on for the last 10 months uh, we have the product live for the next for the last 10 months. We have a bunch of users. We have the entire uh, fraud stack, the KYC stack, the support stack, and um, you know the whole ACH rails is completely um, the the whole experience has been really enhanced and and worked upon. And that's why we are actually able to offer a uh, instant ACH uh, settlement and conversion into crypto uh, from your cash uh, directly from from the Shapeshift wallet via the Onjuno. Uh, checking account are you just uh, showing the just a quick buy experience yeah. perfect so why don't you just show the quick buying buy experience how that will work so these, these are my btc and eth wallets directly in my checking account uh, so a segregation of of money happens in on the front screen itself so there's a checking account which is fdsc insured and these are my crypto wallets right now there is btc and eth we'll be adding usdc as well uh, once I click on this, I can see uh, all these, uh, my entire portfolio essentially, I click on BTC and I can see my balances, uh, I can do buy and sell right now only the receiving functionality is, uh, is enabled, uh, but we'll be, uh, be enabling the sending functionality as well. Uh, once I want to buy crypto, all I have to do is just click on buy, uh, you know, my money is already sitting in my checking account, I just want to do like buy $10 worth of BTC, uh, do a quick confirmation uh, the fees that will be charged uh, just confirm that and i basically literally converted my cash into into crypto from my bank account instantly so that's the flow that that we are essentially enabling and once the send feature is is live uh, you can manually send that uh, that btc which you just converted uh, into shapeshift wallet or uh, a metamask or a, or a ledger wallet or any wallet of your choice or uh, once once we do a recurring uh, on, on ramping experience uh, we'll automatically convert that that money into crypto and, and again auto forward that to any address of your choice uh, so that is exactly what what we'll be be enabling uh, so that's how seamless the overall experience is same thing will happen for for uh, for integrating with your pay, payroll providers as well so if i go to uh, get paid in crypto uh, all i have to do is uh, you know do a quick confirmation select the amount uh, that i want to kind of convert into crypto from my paycheck uh, whether it's you know uh, uh, any amount between 250 to 10000 so i'll just quickly go to thousand dollars i can select multiple currencies so right now we have B btc and eth i'll just choose eth for now uh, 
again quick confirmation in terms of what's the composition of my paycheck at this particular point clicking on continue uh, now it will just redirect it, uh, redirect me to a setup uh, where when users uh, are asked to kind of log into their payroll provider directly uh, and that is either you have you can choose whichever employer that you work for be it amazon or or facebook or, or google and any employer of uh, in the us specifically or if you are a, a sort of gig employee at, at doordash instacart lyft or any, uh, any other companies like these uh, we also have a direct integration uh, with these com- uh, with these payroll providers as well and finally if uh, if there is a specific payroll provider and the employer name is not listed you can just go to that particular payroll provider 50% coverage is in the us is actually adp um, uh, most of the startups use gusto so we have integrations for that as well uh, once the entire flow is kind of done uh, next time onwards when the when the paycheck comes in uh, we automatically convert that into eth 100% uh, so $1000 of your paycheck will get converted into eth and be automatically sent to any wallet of of your choice be it ledger metamask or shapeshift wallet uh, so that's essentially how seamless the flow is and the only reason it's it's possible is because again uh, just reiterate we work at the intersection of, of banking and crypto and that's why uh, this entire process is super seamless so that and just to add over here, uh, this whole flow that Varun is actually showing on the Onjuno platform, uh, a huge chunk of this flow is actually going to be uh, just as a plugin in in the Shapeshift Wallet uh, integration. So you know, users will not even need to go out of the whole, whole Shapeshift experience in order to set up the recurring direct deposits or sec- uh, set up the um, you know one-time uh, instant AC, uh, buying of crypto via ACH. That's right. Yep. Right. Um, yeah. So moving on to the to the next point, actually, uh, in it, so so we just spoke about the on ramping, the instant on ramping experience. Uh, also, two three points uh, to note over here are the first thing is that this is definitely going to be almost instantaneous. Secondly, uh, this is only going to be incurring a zero point nine five percent fee, which is uh, very uh, which which is comparatively uh, really low uh, compared to the other products in the market. And thirdly, uh, the daily limit on the, on the transaction amount that is possible in order to convert from cash to crypto is actually up to $10,000 per day uh, for a user, uh, which is also likely to in, in, increase as we find and build trust in the system, in the users of the system. So these three points are to be noted, uh, you know, in the on-ramp uh, side. The second point is uh, on the off-ramp side, actually. So for all the DAO um, uh, for, for all the DAO, DAO contributors as well as for the Shapeshift members, when they actually want to off ramp from crypto, it becomes a hassleful journey again for them because you know they again need to go to through some or the other exchanges and then wait a long time. What happens with us is that you can directly send your uh, BTC or Ethereum or USDC into the on Juno check uh, checking account wallet, and as and within an instant again. Uh, maybe Varun can show that as well or not. Within an instant, you can actually convert your uh, Ethereum into uh, US dollar and start using it via the debit card that that is already attached to this checking account. And you know, even uh, start enjoying five percent cash back on certain brands, or even uh, just pay your bills and you know, just maybe take out the money from the ATM. You can do whatever you want. Basically, the whole crypto to cash uh, journey is as is instant as well and uh, comes with a really, really low fee of 0.95% as well. And one more thing actually over here, what happens is that because it's a completely regulated platform and and, and because we have uh, captured all the transactions that are happening uh, in the off-ramp side as, as well as the on-ramp side uh, for from the checking account, the whole tax uh, implications is completely taken care of by the platform. We issue a 10, 1099 uh, form to the users every year and uh, you know, you, you really don't need to worry about um, how how the tax uh, thing will play out because we help you over there as well. The third and the final item, so we spoke about uh, on-ramp as well as off-ramps and the third and the final item is uh, around uh, the uh, revenue share that the DAO, that the Shapeshift DAO is actually going to get via us. So uh, out of all the transactions that are generated from the users coming in from the Shapeshift wallet, uh, and and uh, Portis and and the other wallet, uh, we would uh, essentially be sharing thirty percent of the transaction fee with the DAO, uh, and and that goes back into the DAO. So that's how the DAO also uh, kind of earns a revenue. Uh, cool. 
so that's that's uh, from the you know wh- how how shapeshift community would benefit uh, let's just talk quickly about how what the motivations are from the onjuno side uh, onjuno actually gets an early engaged member set uh, via this partnership and for that uh, onjuno is obviously uh, going to be parting uh, with with the 30% revenue that we just mentioned uh, so this is going to be like a win win situation for both the parties and and that's uh, that's why i i believe this proposal is a beautiful one uh cool everything actually comes with uh, with certain set of drawbacks uh so what is the drawback over here right uh, so the drawback over here one of the biggest drawbacks is that because we want to be on the on the right side of regulation we want to be completely regulated we don't want our uh, assist our platform as well as our users to ever come under the radar of the sec uh, you know banning or or any other such regulations that that currently the sec is really going hard on on certain um products and platforms so because of that we always want to be on the right side and we always want to make sure that you know we are compliant and that's why we are, we do a quick kyc uh, at the start of uh, the relationship of the user with onjuno while giving him a fdic uh, checking account so because we again because you know we spent the last 10 months perfecting or, or rather enhancing the system uh, to a certain level where we can trust the users that come in while having the least amount of kyc possible so we've really made it a light kyc by tying up with the right vendors in the market uh, with the with the state of the art systems that we have built uh, over the last 10 months and you know made really robust so the kyc is extremely light uh, having said that we need to do some KYC, we need to do a quick kyc in order to give a fdic insured checking account to our users and also this kyc is only going to be done once uh, for the users uh, in in the users lifetime so you know once the kyc is done you can quickly move ahead and buy and sell uh, crypto uh, very very quickly uh, so uh, another uh, qu- you know uh, obvious drawback is uh, that this is on- a us only product so it's only going to be offered to the us uh, you know people who ca- who have an us ssn as of now because this is you know b- b- because the existing banking infrastructure that we built is only for us as of now but this is very very uh, you know we have plans of expanding it into uk canada europe uh, very very soon so and and we uh, you know wanted to make sure that we mention the drawback so that there's transparency uh, in it, you know we we you know, display some transparency uh, in in whatever we do because that that's how uh, you know that that's one of the core principles uh, in the company as well so yeah that's uh, about it varun over to you yeah i think i was also just looking at at, at the chat and uh, some of the, the the things in terms of uh, questions as well as concerns uh, that i could see one of the things which which kind of billy pointed out uh, was the fact that uh, if we connect with an existing bank account be it a bank of america or any other bank account in the us uh, will there be an ach delay uh, so given the fact that we have kind of mastered uh, this this on ramp and the fact that we have a checking account from from the customer we'll be able to pull money from a bank account much faster but there will, is going to be still some sort of a delay but once the funds are actually sitting in our bank account and in our checking account going from cash to crypto and 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 vice versa is going to be completely instant uh, so uh, for example if this becomes a primary account for the customer they they get their paycheck directly into into this account as well then there is no delay whatsoever for for getting on ramp to crypto and and sending sending that to any of these wallets um the the other is the, the fact that you know we we have to go through all this compliance and uh, and kyc and aml process uh, the thing is i think uh, right now kind of crypto is divided across these uh, these two uh, two platforms one is uh, how do you convert uh, from from cash into into crypto in the first place and and for that uh, you know someone has to go out and and do the heavy lifting in terms of compliance regulations dealing with the with the regulators no matter how how much we hit uh, hit that uh, so so that is the part that we are kind of working towards uh, and then there is you know daos and other defi applications which are uh, which are which are being built and uh, i think what is likely happening uh, and and which will uh, which will kind of soon become very clear that you know most of these fintechs uh, including ourselves uh, who are essentially completely compliant and these you know defi applications daos and others 
uh, we'll find different ways uh, of kind of coming together and, and working together because it's important for for users to kind of go in and out of uh, out of crypto back into uh, sort of the, the cash economy because uh, you know you have to pay your bills uh, pay, pay your credit card bills and, and rent and things around that so which is still accepted in, in cash as of, as of today we would love to to see a world wherein everything is kind of denominated in in crypto and you can use crypto for pretty much everything but till that point and till the point we, we get there i think uh, this kind of synergy is is going to be super important and uh, this is likely to be one of the first uh, integrations wherein a fintech compliant uh, regulated banking platform is uh, partnering with with a dao uh, to kind of make that uh, that synergy happen so super excited for for this partnership to get get rolled out Uh, so actually, that kind of completes uh, our presentation. Uh, we also have a consumer a consumer product. So in case you kind of want to already get started, uh, you, you can just go to onjuno.com slash crypto. You can see uh, what is the what is the product that that we offer. You, you know, feel free to join our, our Discord community as well. Uh, uh, give us feedback, and you kind of want to work with the Shapeshift community so that we can improve the product further before it actually goes live in on on, on the Shapeshift, Shapeshift platform. And we'd love to have some of you as as early users and, and adopters as well. Uh, so I think that kind of completes our presentation. Uh, Cha, over to you. We'd be happy to take more questions from the community. Great. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, I think that was great. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, just follow-ups there. Also, if anyone has questions from the community, please raise your hand and we'll get you up on stage. Um, I know that you mentioned it, and we've talked about this previously, about adding can the UK, Canada, and Europe. Um, do you guys know, do you guys have an idea of, of, of time on that, of when that would be possible? Uh, yeah, definitely. So actually, uh, I mean, currently focused mainly on the on the US, at least for the next 12 months. Uh, post uh, post that, I mean, we, we have obviously started working with our the bank partner in, in UK and Europe already. So there'll be our compliance process and, and you know, uh, the heavy lifting that, that needs to be done as we launch a new country. Uh, so we will probably expect to, to go live anytime between uh, anytime in the next 12 to 15 months in, in, in UK and, and Europe. Uh, but that's the timeline that we're looking at for that launch. Okay, great. Um, the other um, question I had for you is, so when we were, we were talking about the revenue share, I'm thinking that the revenue share would, like you guys get, it would be in USD, but I think, so correct me if I'm wrong on that, but if that's correct, then the Dow Treasury would need to be able to take um, some sort of crypto. Would we be able to get it in some sort of stable coin? Oh, definitely. So we can uh, we have the the option uh, once the partnership uh, happens, uh, and uh, since this is a unique partnership, and uh, we will we are happy to create a new process for uh, for, for this as well. Uh, ideally, uh, all these payouts are done in USD, but we'll also be able to do it in USDC, ETH, or, or BTC uh, based on what the DAO requirement is and and what the treasury requirement of the DAO is. Okay. Yeah, great. I think. Willie has a lot more knowledge in regards to like which specific ones he wants and what, or which would be best. Um, but I, I think, um, but that's great. That sounds like a great plan. Um, awesome. Do you want to speak to that, Willie? Really, you guys would would list Fox, right? But that's a separate conversation. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. E eventually, we have to. Um, cool. I, I see some of the other questions as well, Chao, uh, in, in the chat. Uh, I think we have uh, one question from, from, from Seth. Uh, should I go ahead and answer that? Yeah, that would be great. Awesome. I think uh, Siddharth can jump in in that question as well. So I think what uh, Seth is mentioning, and he clearly laid out three points. One is, uh, so what are the benefits uh, that we as a platform kind of provide? One is, uh, you know, crypto-friendly banking service uh, that basically connects uh, crypto wallets and, and bank accounts. Uh, the other is, you know, super easy tax management to go in and out of crypto. Every time you buy and sell, uh, we'll be able to shoot 1099s. Uh, and the last is uh, financially supporting the DAO with transaction fees. So whatever transaction fees that, that you earn, a part of that goes back to the DAO. So I think uh, Seth has laid out the, the, the three points really well. Uh, the question, he, uh, question uh, Seth has asked is, uh, what are some of the red flags with, that they should be concerned about? Uh, you know, obviously, uh, uh, people in crypto do not like to kind of get KYC, and uh, but as you mentioned uh, uh, in the right way, uh, there's probably no way around it at this particular point if you want to go from cash to crypto. Uh, so, so that you want to just quickly take that uh, any sort of red flags that uh, that people should be concerned about. Uh, 
I don't, know, I don't know what red flags things. So there are no red flags. I mean, you know, we just wanted to lay out the drawbacks uh, very, very uh, uh, upfront. We wanted to lay out the drawbacks. So we've mentioned the fact so, that, you know. So what might be helpful is just to uh, to, uh, to tell the community what are some of the, the details that, that we might need uh, in our, our to create the account. Uh, so I think uh, the first is uh, the, the name, the, the full legal name. Uh, second is date of birth. Uh, third one is uh, uh, the, the physical address uh, because that is something which is an important uh, person, personally identifiable information uh, which is needed for, for creating a new checking account. Uh, although it's crypto friendly, we still need that. Um, and finally, we would need SSN. Uh, so those are some of the, the things that we would need for, for creating a, a checking account. Uh, in case the user, based on the SSN history and, and, and some of the details uh, which, which we get, uh, if someone gets flagged, you might have to do uh, another document verification where the user needs to upload either a passport or, or, or license or a government ID uh, just to kind of uh, go through this this flag. Uh, so those are some of the details that that, that we'll need. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, this uh, this personally identifiable information is, is stored, uh, you know, securely. We obviously don't sell and, and share this data with anyone, uh, any anybody else, um, and it's only used uh, for for identification when it comes to you know, tax filing and, and things around that. Uh, so that's uh, that's how we kind of think about our KYC and AML program. Yep, and and if someone only just uh, checking the SSN history is actually just checking, you know, whether whether some other systems have also uh, accessed some. Have, have had some common points in in the fraud stack uh so if the same user's phone has uh you know registered a fraud in some other platform we're able to identify that so basically uh if our system is able to identify uh via various different checks not only just ssn but various different checks uh if it's able to identify that hey this this user is actually a good user we just uh you know don't even ask him for any uh, document check whatsoever but in case it doesn't then uh we also ask a, a document check so that 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 is uh, one little thing but that's it yeah. yeah i think um seth uh i think you know i don't i don't know if it's a red flag but you know one thing that's not ideal obviously is kyc which we've talked about and the other thing is we would you know we we do want to be able to service users outside of the us but um i think that's something the Angino team is working on and i think in the meantime we would have other uh, on ramp and off ramp providers to fulfill those needs. Definitely. Also, uh, I see a lot of conversation in, in the chat about specifically KYC, AML, and then another thing I think uh, just to reiterate uh, the, the goal for this is to kind of help uh, everyone seamlessly get on ramp and off ramp, and also. Uh, this on-ramp kind of makes it easier for new users to, to crypto to start using Shapeshift as well. So the goal here is is mass adoption. And I think uh, uh, as, as someone pointed out in the chat as well, till the point, uh, we don't have a massive crypto economy. There's probably no way to get around, get around this. So I think uh, uh, from a long-term interest perspective for getting on, get, uh, making it easy for existing users to on-ramp and off-ramp, and obviously, to uh, to get more new users on board to start using Safeshift, I think uh, we might have to kind of live with this right now. Yeah. Um. One other one other piece I wanted to touch on um is, I think you guys have worked with other open source um platforms in the past. Uh, can you confirm that? I want to make sure I'm remembering that correctly. And then also, if so, do you have any concerns about that, or you know, what was that experience like? Oh, uh, actually, I mean, the ethos of uh, our uh, our company and 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 the team is is, is always been open source, and and we were sort of earliest in in, in DeFi. Uh, just to give you some background about uh, you know Nuo that that we had built, we were the first ones to uh, to kind of use Uniswap. Uh, uh, so Uniswap's first outside integration, apart from just being an exchange, was for Nuo, and this was basically for for margin trading and for leverage. So anyone could uh, take two x, three x, five x leverage and and long and short a token, and we would use Uniswap in the background. So we have had experience of working with open source uh, software for for ages. Um, uh, so 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 that is one. Uh, the other is we we also created a lot of interesting use cases uh, within DeFi. So we were the first ones to do meta transactions uh, at scale. So we had at, at one point we had done like almost 200k meta transactions, and we were the first ones to kind of introduce that uh, for for average retail customers. So uh, making things easy, making DeFi and crypto easy for for average users to understand and, and access is something that we have been passionate about since. Is the very beginning. We also were the first ones uh, to introduce contract wallets, so that you know, if someone, uh, an average user who doesn't have a MetaMask 
and, and because it's like 2018, early 2018, 2019, there used to be like 10 steps before you could start using a DeFi applications. We started using contract wallet so that, you know, you can just buy crypto on a Coinbase or anywhere else, uh, put that money into a contract wallet. You will just feel like hey, this is a, a web 2.0 experience, but in the background, everything was happening through contracts. Uh, so a lot of experience of working with uh, smart con contract platforms, a lot of experience of working with open source code uh, of, of others as well. Uh, so I think this and its synergy with, with Shapeshift also kind of is, is is natural and was kind of meant to happen. Great, thank you. Uh, Willie, did you have a question? So you want to mute for a second? Yeah, I've got a technical question. Um, so do you guys know with this new uh, web app that we're building, it's open source and it's going to be fully decentralized. So there's not going to be any dependencies on uh, Shapeshift servers. Part of the goal is that um, it can be an interface that anyone can run that doesn't rely on any centralized uh, backend infrastructure. So uh, I'm curious, can we can this integration be hosted purely in the front end so that basically the user's client is just communicating directly with on Juno? Um, do you want me to? Do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, so Willie, first of all, yes, I was actually reading up about uh, you know the three different phases, right? And I think this is the third phase uh, that you're talking about for for the Shapeshift uh, uh, open source wallet uh, to to be launched where users can connect their own wallets like MetaMask and, and other wallets. I think that's the product that you're talking about. Is that correct? Yeah, no, already we have a product where users can collect, connect other wallets and uh, we have fiat on and off ramp integrations. Um, but our current beta.shapeshift.com does depend on servers that Shapeshift operates. Um, mm -hmm. The engineering work stream is laser focused on this new web app that does not have any dependencies on Shapeshift servers. Basically, it's a, a front end that anyone can run that communicates directly with node providers. And the idea is that anyone can, can run these nodes. So we're designing it that way so that eventually Shapeshift can stop operating servers and uh, you know, have this interface that's truly decentralized. So um, basically, are we able to integrate on Juno in this interface in a way that uh, doesn't require any Shapeshift backend? Yep, yep, yep. Exactly. That's in fact exactly what it is going to be even uh, right now, uh, so to say, because what's going to happen is that it's going to open in a kind of a sandbox and I mean, in inside a box environment of uh, virtual uh, environment of uh, on Juno. So it's, you know, once the users go from their uh, buy uh, crypto, you know, when, when they go into the buy crypto side of Shapeshift, uh, they would be uh, th there would be the third thing on Juno, and once they click that, they would essentially be opening something like shapeshift.onjuno.com, and uh, that's going to be completely hosted on our side uh, itself. So there would be no requirement of the backend for uh, of uh, Shapeshift whatsoever over there once that flow takes over. Yeah, does awesome. that answer? Yeah, yeah, that doesn't. Could we still? It's so. Is that like an iframe that opens up, or is it a separate tab that would open up? I believe. Uh, I mean, it's going to be something like an iframe. Uh, uh, the Burkler uh, Swarm could answer that question exactly, maybe, uh, or maybe not. Uh, Swarm, you want to go for it? Yeah. It will do, Ahim, right? Yeah. yeah we're, we're flexible on that. It can open up as a tab as well, and then, uh, you know, at the end, it can redirect back uh, to, you know, shape shift. Uh, currently, we we kind of you know looked at how banks are us and uh, banks are experience and you know kind of uh, have envisioned you know that will be the flow, but but we are flexible on that. Yeah. Cool. And do you guys have a, an API integration as well? Yes. 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 So uh, we. Uh... Oh, for, for this particular product, we are only going to be, uh, you know, creating like an SDK or like an iframe thing that that, you, that we just mentioned. Uh, but again, we are going to be open to having an API, but that API is then going to be, you know, have uh, would then require us to do an authentication. And that auth would again go through our uh, iframe or, or a SDK kind of a flow. Uh, so that's something that's going to be uh, probably later down the line. As of now, it's going to be a straightforward plug and play integration uh, without the need of an API. Got it. And uh, would it would it uh, support mobile as well? That SDK or what do you? Awesome. So whatever we build, uh, you know, our design team actually automatically just builds it for uh, the mobile uh, screens as well. Awesome. Glad to hear it. I'm also curious. Can you guys share any rates for uh, success rates for KYC or purchase attempts? I know um, some of our experience in the past with on-ramp providers 
Um, I'll use the example of Wire. Uh, Wire at one point, our success rates for users who are attempting to KYC dropped below 20%. So yep. and we, and we actually had to turn off Wire. Um, are you guys able to share any of the rates around uh, success rates for users who attempt to KYC? Sure. Uh, let me just actually quickly uh, answer that. So I think one of the, the reasons, uh, and this is, some, this is a very important point, uh, the reason that debit card and credit card rails are not that reliable is because there's massive debit card and credit card fraud, you know, not just in the US, but, but everywhere else. And to kind of compensate for that fraud, uh, you know, the, the fees are high, the limits are, are low, and the success rates are, are not the best because anyone can just you know, uh, claim that the, the, the transaction was done fraudulently, fraudulently and, and then the service provider kind of needs to, to refund the amount and, and all that, the entire system kind of makes it super complicated. Uh, what we do is, uh, because we rely on direct deposit trails, we rely on ACH trails and the fact that the money and uh, the, the cash is actually sitting in our checking account, the chances of the transaction failing are, 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 are super minimal. Uh, so, I mean, I won't be able to give you the exact because uh, this is like super early in terms of the data that, that we are seeing. Our success rates are almost like 90% plus uh, because we haven't opened it to, to a large set of audience. Uh, but even in the in the future, we won't expect it to uh, to go down below below 80% given the fact that uh, we are very sure that the, the transaction, be it ACH or a direct deposit or anything else, uh, that the fuse is actually going to settle. And that's the massive difference between debit cards and, and, and credit cards. Uh, that's the reason our limits are going to be higher. Our fees are going to be lower. And, uh, you know, naturally, our uh, success, success rates are going to be higher as well, it's just because of the fact that we are using different rails compared to, to anything else out there currently. I just wanted to add one thing over there uh, really quickly, uh, is that, you know, since the last 10 months, we've actually made sure that uh, you, you, we, we've actually tried to make the whole KYC system so much more robust uh, and, and accepting of a lot more uh, applications than, than what we were doing at an earlier stage. Secondly, even if the user is actually not uh, getting auto uh, approved by the system, we have uh, a very, very responsive support team, uh, you know, to which our users can instantly reach out over inter over an intercom chat or even via a phone call, actually. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if they are genuine users and, and if they present their case uh, very, very uh, normally, uh, you know, they would be definitely allowed to be, uh, you know, allowed to go through those, those, those transactions would definitely be allowed to go through. Awesome. Um, one thing that I know a lot of the community members are interested in is uh, on ramps and off ramps from layer two. Uh, are you guys looking at uh, integrating any layer twos? And so I guess a similar question. Um, are there, does a user have to pay a gas cost uh, network fee when they're uh, buying Ethereum, for example? Uh, Sula, you want to take that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, currently what's happening is that, you know, we we are definitely not, not an, in L2, but uh, we are very, very uh, aggressively looking at, at uh, one of the L2 solutions, uh, namely Polygon. Uh, and uh, that is something that we're looking at very aggressively. Uh, and uh, we don't have a timeline, but yes, that is something that we're looking at very aggressively. You know, we understand that that's like the gas fee, especially right now, uh, is definitely a pain point, and we want to solve it faster than ever. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are looking at that. I think that'd be huge. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think um, really it's a problem that someone needs to solve. Like we're seeing some on and off ramps. Um, support Polygon recently. It's definitely in the early stages, but uh, a lot of them don't don't support US users for some reason, like Ramp Network is one that yeah. has XI on off-ramp but doesn't support, U doesn't give US users access. But yeah, it's really important to solve because there's just not enough space on layer one to really on-ramp uh, the masses, so. Uh, uh, one thing that uh, I, yeah, yeah. one, so, uh, data point that I think you asked, which kind of got, uh, start was uh, the percentage, right? We're roughly around 75 to 80% of the KYC uh, applications do, uh, you know, get an account. And post getting an account, we don't have a drop off uh, in terms of purchases and things. So this is, again, super early, but, but you know, that's compared to, you know, why we, we are definitely like way, way, way better. Awesome. We have a, there's another um, question in the chat that I just want from Mr. Nerdhair. Um, his question is, how does Anjuna get the address to send the crypto to 
uh, send the crypto to for on-ramp transactions? Is it on Juno's wallet only? No, you, uh, it's actually, uh, uh, so whenever we have a deeper integration, so, you know, either via the API or via the URL, um, uh, you know, either a MetaMask or a Ledger or uh, a shape, uh, any, you know, any wallet, including Shapeshift, will be able to pass on that URL and that becomes the, the receiving address, essentially. Users can also manually change that if, if required. Uh, so if you want to say that, hey, I want to receive it in, in some other wallet, my blockchain.com wallet, the BTC needs to go there, we'll be able to do that. Uh, on Juno wallet is essentially the, the default wallet. Uh, and you know, users can, can use it if they don't actually have a wallet. But our goal is to kind of help you take your, your crypto wherever you want, essentially. Uh, and, and this is something which is super important for uh, for customers, especially you know, given the fact that you want to control your private key. Uh, so there won't be any restrictions in terms of where you would want to take your, your crypto. Uh, the, the fallback and the default would be uh, essentially on Juno for, for new users who actually don't have uh, a crypto. And, um, in case, uh, and, and also in case a transaction fails, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, whatever crypto is already converted can, can go back to the on Juno wallet. So it will just be uh, used as a, as a fallback. Yeah, go ahead, Salah. Uh, you can see the screen, right? Yeah. OK, cool. So uh, basically, you know, uh, the user clicks on Juno over here. Uh, once you go into the buy wallet, uh, buy flow, and then you click on Juno, uh, the user is actually able to put in the address details, and we will essentially pull this directly from your from the wallet that is connected into the in, into uh, Shapeshift at that point for the user. So this will be auto populated, and as soon as uh, you know you create an account and you you set up the recurring deposits uh, via either way, uh, either via an external bank account or via your paycheck. Uh, the funds will directly go over here. Awesome. So I have a quick question about uh, taxes. So I know that you guys uh, provide the documentation to submit taxes, but there are a lot of uh, taxable events, shall we say, when you move money around in crypto. I'm wondering if your platform does anything to reduce or to help your users uh, avoid as many taxes as possible uh, so, uh so actually currently what uh, because we just deal with three crypto assets btc eth and, and usdc and there are so many different assets potentially on on shapeshift that that you might be uh, might want to trade or on uniswap and and other places uh, it uh, it'll be very hard for us to actually figure out uh, where the capital gains so you know uh, where exactly, uh, uh, you know, what exactly was the taxable event, and that's actually potentially a goal wherein we would want to kind of capture all of that together. But right now, we will be able to issue, uh, able to issue a 1099. Uh, there are a lot of these different tax forms, tax bit, and, and uh, tax websites uh, where you can actually upload all these tax forms together. All you can also put in all your on-chain transactions, and hopefully they'll be able to help you make sense of uh, sense of it. But uh, currently, at the moment, it's basically all the transactions which happen through us uh, are the ones where we will issue. Uh, you know, uh, tax details essentially. All right, sounds like a good thing to keep my eye on in the future then. Oh, definitely, uh, yeah. All right, thank you. Thanks, Seth. I have one other question. Um, do you guys have plans on adding more um, assets that you support besides Bitcoin, ETH, and USDC? And I guess in regards to that, like, what is your vetting process and, and you know, generally how long does it take to add one? Um, so actually, I mean, we could uh, potentially add uh, more, more, more tokens uh, in, in the next three to six months. We're kind of actually staying away from, from directly adding, adding tokens because our goal is to kind of help uh, users on ramp to like the three biggest assets. Uh, mm -hmm. And we uh, don't think of ourselves more as, as a trading platform, essentially, right? So we, we just want to be a gateway between cash and crypto because I think uh, a, a lot of uh, users in, in crypto kind of denominate their wealth in BTC, ETH, uh, USDC, potentially, uh, you know, others in, in the future. But currently, you know, these three. And we just want to be a storehouse of, of, of the, uh, these denominations at, at this moment. If the user wants to kind of create more assets or uh, buy other coins and, and tokens, we would actually prefer that happening outside the the, the platform because we, we are not even kind of thinking ourselves as, as a competitor to any of these trading platforms. We work best between uh, we, at the intersection of cash and crypto. And uh, that's the reason we have a slightly more, uh, uh, slightly different take, although we could could uh, could add more, more assets, uh, we would prefer not to. Okay, great, thank you. 
Um, and then Mr. Nerd Haribo has another question. Or wait, maybe this was already answered. Never mind. Uh, I can take that up. I guess there was a follow up question as well. Uh, so I think Willie was asking if there's going to be a separate address per transaction. Uh, actually, uh, no. So there will be like one address for the user uh, and that user, uh, I mean, and, and the uh, crypto can be transferred into that particular wallet address. I mean, one address per cryptocurrency per user. And the user can transfer that uh, crypto to that particular address uh, from where the off ramp would happen. Uh, is there any other question on that side? On on the side of the uh, off ramp? I, I, Mr. Nerd Hair's <laughs> typing. So I'm waiting to see if he says something. Um, I, I can't type fast enough, so I figured I'd just come ask. Um, so is there, uh, a, is there an API that would let us integrate an on Juno wallet as sort of essentially a first class citizen, um, in the shapeshift system? Uh, you know, could, can we, can we make it so that users can send transactions from, uh, their on Juno wallet? I can imagine it would be, uh, easier for users to uh you know send funds over somewhere if they could you know get them back out again in the same interface yeah so like if i could just kind of quickly take that so i think that is exactly the the the, the plan sir uh so uh, in the first phase of uh, our integration and partnerships uh, given the fact that we are focused mainly on a seamless on-ramp experience uh, we won't need that deeper integration but if you are looking at a seamless off-ramp experience as you mentioned uh we would definitely you need to need to provide an api and you know as as you mentioned on needs to be uh, treat uh, on wallet needs to be treated as a first class citizen in terms of a direct integration between uh shapeshift and, and on juno so that you can on-ramp and off-ramp directly uh between uh, uh these these accounts essentially uh so that's how I, we would kind of divide our, our integration first step would be on ramps and seamless on ramps and for that there is uh, you know uh, there's no deep integration which is required, uh, but to make the off ramp seamless, as you rightly pointed out, we will definitely need that integration, and, and that will happen over time as well. Um, the uh, uh, just I'm I'm sure pretty sure I know the answer to this already, but uh, this is your your wallet is custodial, right? Like, do the users have their keys? Oh no! So our wallet is completely custodial. Uh, okay. I mean, no two questions about about it, and and that's the reason uh, we prefer users. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, the only interaction that users will have, they ha they are taking the money out into an external wallet. Is, yeah. is when the paycheck comes in or the money comes in, we convert that into 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 crypto. That is the only time where we'll be holding crypto in a in a custodial wallet, and then automatically sending it out to any non custodial of the users' choice. So. Uh, but there are no two questions about the fact that there will be be custody um, uh, in in the middle at some point. Sure. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Mr. Nerd Hair. Um, we are almost at the top of the hour. I just want to check and see if anyone else has any other questions. I'm going to take silence and no request to speak. Um, as a no. Um, all right. Well, I just want to um, thank the on Juno team today. Um, if anyone does have any questions after this meeting, please um, post them in the forum. Um, the on Juno team originally posted that so they can answer any additional questions there. Um, and I think that's it. Um, thank you so much.